Hey everyone, this is children's author Christina Soontorn Vaught. And before I became a children's book author, I used to work in children's museums. And one of my favorite children's museums is the Duseum. It's such a great museum. And so I'm so excited to be here doing this video. I am going to be reading from the first chapter of my new novel. It's called A Wish in the Dark. And it, this is a fantasy story. It's set in Thailand, which is where my family is from. And it's about a boy who is born in a prison and he escapes from prison only to find that the prison warden's daughter is on the hunt for him and is going to track him down. So um, it's an adventure story. There's lots of magic and there's a lot of twists and surprises along the way. So the first chapter is very short and it starts off in the prison and you get to know the main character. His name is Bong. A monster of a mango tree grew in the courtyard of Namwon prison. Its fluffy green branches stretched across the cracked cement and hung over the soupy brown water of the Chatana River. The women inmates spent most of their days sheltered under the shade of this tree while the boats glided up and down and up again on the other side of the prison gate. The dozen children who lived in Namwon also spent most of their days lying in the shade but not in mango season. In mango season, the tree dangled golden drops of heaven overhead, swaying just out of reach, and it drove the kids nuts. They shouted at the mangoes. They chucked pieces of broken cement at them, trying to knock them down. And when the mangoes refused to fall, the children cried, stomped their bare feet, and collapsed in frustration on the ground, which is what I would do if I couldn't get a mango. I think I would do that. Bong never joined them. Instead, he sat against the tree's trunk, hands crossed behind his head. He looked like he was sleeping, but actually he was paying attention. Bong had been paying attention to the tree for weeks. He knew which mangoes had started ripening first. He noticed when the fruit lightened from lizard skin green to pumpkin rind yellow. He watched the ants crawl across the mangoes and he knew where they paused to sniff the sugar inside. Bong looked at his friend Somkit and gave him a short nod. Somkit wasn't shouting at the mangoes either. He was sitting under the branch that Bong had told him to sit under, waiting. Somkit had been waiting an hour, and he'd wait for hours more if he had to, because the most important thing to wait for in Namwon were the mangoes. He and Bong were both nine years old, both orphans. Somkit was a head shorter than Bong, and skinny, even for a prisoner. He had a wide, round face, and the other kids teased him that he looked like those grilled rice balls on sticks that old ladies sold from their boats. Like many of the women at Namwon, their mothers had been sent there because they'd been caught stealing. Both of their mothers had died in childbirth, though from the stories the other women still told, some kids' births had been more memorable and involved feet showing up where a head was supposed to be. Bong wagged his finger at his friend to get him to scoot to the left, a little more, a little more, there. Finally, after all that waiting, Bong heard the soft pop of a mango stem. He gasped and smiled as the first mango of the season dropped straight into some kid's waiting arms. But before Bong could join his friend and share their triumph, two older girls noticed what some kid held in his hands. Hey, did you see that? said one of the girls, propping herself up on her knobby elbows. Sure did, said the other, cracking scab-covered knuckles. Hey, skin and bones, she called to some kid. What do you got for me today? Uh-oh, said some kid, cradling the mango in one hand and bracing himself to stand up with the other. Uh-oh is right. They're about to get in a fight over this mango, which I, I don't know, I'm, and I feel like mangoes are worth fighting over. But you, if you want to find out what happens with Pong and some kid, not just in this chapter, but through their lives. You have to read A Wish in the Dark. And I'm so excited to share it with you. Thank you, everyone, for listening. This is Christina Suntorvat. Thanks. Bye.